to for concerts and stuff. So okay. whoever will be performing, I just got interviewed for their concert. Okay, cool. So like I usually do in the film area, that's why I'm really familiar with this. Nice. You ready? Cool. So, uh, Jessica, thank you mm -hmm. for coming out. Um, so, um, I understand that you're very familiar with the film uh, area. What's your history with it? Uh, so, I work directly for the public and for, for the Develop Foundation, and we have a management contract with the city to manage the public improvement district that Develop is in. So, I'm the executive director. Um, and I work directly with the property owners and business owners and um, as many residents as we can, the community association, uh, just to improve and market the area. Okay, so when you do all that, do you do it under a different name or under the common desk name? The common desk is just our office space. So this is okay. a co-working space, so it has nothing to do with our job. Okay. Um, so this is just where, where we office. Okay. Um, and so everything is under the Develop Foundation. Develop Foundation, yeah. okay. So what motivated you to start this Deep Bell Foundation? So I didn't start it. Oh, okay. Um, it's been around for 10 or so years, since 93. Okay. Uh, and uh, it has had different management in the past. It's kind of looked different and different. Um, it's kind of taken on different roles in the past. Um, my background is in graphic design and in design research. And so um, when I was in grad school, I ended up doing this whole thesis on um, how you can build a community through communication. And it looked at, it ended up building a business association on Lowest Greenville Avenue. And it was all purely based on how can we get everyone to talk to each other better. And so from that experience, some um, of the property owner, owners that own property in Develop or in Greenville uh, also own here. And they asked me to consider this job. So it was directly related on building relationships um, fostering open communication with business owners and then with the surrounding neighborhoods um, and then the, with the city at large and so um, I've always had a really strong passion for local small business uh, and just trying to, uh, the city doesn't make it very easy for them to thrive um, in the neighborhood or in, in the city at all so um, the more help you can give to neighborhoods like this that are primarily local small business the it's the better it can be so. Um, so, would you say that the crime has raised in the development area, or that there has been a rise in something going on here? I think, um, I think that's a good question. Uh, I think statistically, it hasn't. I think uh, visually and the way it's talked about and as how much it's been talked about makes it seem like there's more. But I think the actual reports don't really reflect that it's actually rising. I think it's that people know about it. Um, which I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I yeah. think it's still crime and it still needs to be dealt with. And I think it needs to be dealt with on our level as a neighborhood and not just what everyone else should do, but what, what's right for the development. Okay. Yeah, well, do you have any personal like interactions with this that happened like, in the development area that motivates you to move forward with helping fix the community or any kind of like crime that you've seen firsthand or any of your friends that dealt with it in this area? Uh, I mean, we have, we're really close to a lot of business owners that have dealt with the stuff firsthand and yeah. we know about it. And then, um, I mean, we've seen, I've seen some of the major opinion like stuff. I haven't been a witness to a fight or anything. Okay. Um, so, but it doesn't mean that I don't care about it. I mean, it still is a, is a, is an issue and it needs to get dealt with. So, uh, I think it's my job and my obligation to this neighborhood to work really hard to fix it and figure out the right ways to work with it. And to us, to me, it means it's a highly collaborative effort that it's not just the foundation working on this, but it's property owners and business owners and residents and just lovers of deep Elm in general and trying to figure out the right option. Awesome, thank you so much. And um, what would be the ideal path to help find this? Like, what features would it have? Would you think that would be most helpful for the community members of Deep Elm? But in the in the perspective of the people, like the patrons of Deep Elm, not the staff owners and all that. I think that's your job to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think um, I don't know. It depends. I think it. I think it could mean one thing to me, and it could yeah. mean a totally different thing to a property owner, a business owner, mm -hmm. a bar owner, or a shop owner. And I think to me, it's vital that um, they all have input because they all are going to use it in a different way. And then you kind of figure out what the common grounds are for that, and then you kind of and you go from there. Um, I think that it needs to be uh, 
easy to use and it's understandable what the purpose is. Like it's really clear what the purpose of the app is. And if the app is just there to oh, notify people of other things that are going on, um, that's one thing. If the app is to directly coordinate with DPD on issues that are going on, so it's another level of calling 911. One of the big things that we've were told is that the actual calls into 911 don't reflect the talk about crime in the neighborhood. So to me, that's a big red flag. And so it, to me, it means not everyone's calling 911 when they should. And instead they're posting things on Facebook instead of calling 911 or they're posting it and then calling 911 when we just don't know. But to me, it always has to go back to 911 because that's what DPD has told me and that's what matters. And that's what makes the reports and what makes those are like that for facts. Um, so I think it depends on what the whole goal of the app is. I think the app could take on several life forms and it could serve a lot of different needs and I think it's gonna come down to the actual people who we think will use it. Because I also think there's a, a group that will use it at night and there's a group that'll use it during the day for panhandling and homelessness issues. Uh, and how does it work that way? 